if you're not good by yourself in a room, you got some darkness. It may not be a lot, but for me, I that's what we distract with drugs and alcohol and beers and you know women and men like that. We distract ourselves. We'll always be with people. If you find yourself incredibly uncomfortable alone, you feel yourself drawn to your phone to text people or call people to go out to eat. That's how you know for sure there's something going on. And any kind of darkness, if you want to not feel dark, you put light on it. Mm-hmm. And and essentially, light is bringing to the world because the problem most of us have is like. We don't want to see it ourselves and oh man, we don't want the world to see it. Oh no, right? Because what if they feel bad and we as humans need acceptance. And so when I don't have the acceptance, I feel really bad. So I'll hide that stuff so nobody sees it. And then, you know, it's just a scary thing and it compounds, compounds, compounds. Boom, 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 boom. What's up, everybody? You're listening to the Hustle and Flow Chart podcast with your boys, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. Welcome back to the Hustle and Flow Chart podcast. We're here. <coughs> We're here. And we you made are. it. We, we made it to our own podcast that, today. Is that what uh, Jimmy Fallon says? You're here. You made it. I think so. I think he says that at the beginning of every episode. I think you've said that as an intro before. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't watched Jimmy in a while. I haven't either. I've been off the uh, the late night train, I guess, for watching those guys. I don't know. Pretty much ever I've been since, watching like, gardening a lot. <laughs> ever since the COVID <laughs> stuff kind of happened, I've kind of checked out of the news for a while because it's like... I feel like you watch one news station, they're telling you one thing's happening. You watch a different news station, they're telling you a different thing's happening. And I'm just like, I don't know who to believe. I'm turning it all off. <laughs> Always do your research, folks. Yeah. But who knows what to believe anymore? But yeah. yes, I'm kind of the same. It's uh, it's a lot. It's yeah. coming at you fast. But I think what's cool about... Um, so we're chatting with Anthony Trucks today. Yes. This dude has a an extremely interesting story. Yeah. Uh, lots of downs, obviously some ups in there as well. Lots of ups as well. I mean, usually balance out some way, but, um, yeah, I mean, what he's gone cre like he takes you back all the way from what foster care yeah, and going, you know, being in a lot of different homes and, you know, I've got some experience in that and being on the other side of the system. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting, but it's tough, man. It's super tough, but he's been through it all the way to, you know, all, his college years at, as a duck at, at Oregon state. Yeah. Um, uh, in the NFL for what the Bucks? Few years, I the think. Washington Redskins when they were called the Redskins, but I'm not allowed to say that anymore. <laughs> it's the football club now. The, I think. Washington Football Club now, and then he was and also Steelers. on the Steelers. That's yes. right. So, and then he hurt himself at the Steelers. So, not taking away anything from his story, but the dude's gone through like some interesting stuff to and get. He was on to. American Ninja Warrior. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and uh, we'll get into that a little later in the episode, but it's. Yeah. It's interesting, but he's had some super crashes down. Like, just think about it. You're in the NFL. He's he's playing, you know, at this elite level and then gets hurt. But then, you know, he has nothing. So yeah. just think about that. Like, you hear this story a lot with professional athletes. Like, oh, they retire and then they, they just completely flop or they go broke. A lot of them, like, yeah. they just don't, they can't keep doing what they loved or what well, they trained so for. So many people's life. identities are tied to their career, right? And that's really what we're talking about here is like, how to not be so tied to your identity and how to actually shift your identity around into the mm-hmm. into identifying as the person you want to be. Ah, oh, shift. Ah, oh, shift. You like that? Is that? That's the name of his podcast? Right? I do believe so. So yeah, check out Ah, oh, shift. <laughs> I, I just like this. Yeah, I hope that's the name of his podcast. I'm pretty sure. I, actually, I don't think we even mentioned it, but I know I read it somewhere. And if it's not, it fits because he says shift a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, uh, if it's, it's not, identity. go yeah. to anthonytrucks.com because that's where that's sort right. of the home base for everything he's doing. Uh, real active on Instagram, so check them out there. Yep, and uh, we're taking notes. We're always taking notes. So we we got you back. If you don't want to take any notes, um, and we got you back. So they're free for mm-hmm. two weeks of this episode. Go wing live. Go to hustleandflowchart dot com slash comp c o m p. It's hustleandflowchart dot com slash comp. Get the notes, and um, you're gonna get a lot of little nuggets of wisdom in there. Nuggies, nuggies. Um, what else? Anything else, Matt? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of other stuff we can no, talk no, no. about. Anything we should mention here, or are we we good to go? I think we should go bring it over to Anthony. All right, he's he's a uh, got a little firepower here. So get ready, y'all. Anthony, we're going. We're live. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing well, man. How are you doing? Amazing. And uh, kicking off our day with conversation with you. That's a good time. <laughs> yeah, you know? and like you just always come with the ball of energy, man. <laughs> I try. That's that's who I am as a human. It works. It does, man. Well, uh, we were just nerding out about this like podcast uh, studio or office, I guess you got now, right? You oh, just yeah. like revamp the bad boy. Yeah, it's a green screen. Just kidding. It's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the best. Be an expensive green screen. Yeah. <laughs> what do you call? Uh, Thank I think you, you called. Yeah, for sure. Then you call it uh, your cockpit or something, right? Last time it's you the cockpit, I- bro. I got like, uh, yeah. I mean, if you look at it from my angle, I got like three screens and I have all these weird plugs and cameras, and so it's like I settle in. I just sit. 
And to be just full transparency, man, it gets a little bit warm in here. And so I walk out here. My wife's like, did you just work out? <laughs> Feels my like bottom it. half is, is a little sweaty and stinky, I guess. <laughs> nice. Well, you're burning calories <laughs> while podcasting. So that's awesome. <laughs> there, that's we there we go. There we go. Yeah, well, I got to give a shout out to uh, what, Chris Ross. He connected us and said, like, you are the, the, the best human to follow on Instagram. He's like, you'll soon see why. And it's true. No, man. Thank it's you. just like day after day motivation, just like almost like rah, rah, you know, whenever you need that little pick me up. Yeah. When, uh, I, when, I, was, goal, man. Yeah. when I was doing some research, I, I was just noticing you've been on like so many different podcasts and I'm like, oh, like we have so many mutual friends. It's it's crazy that we haven't crossed paths. I noticed that you've been on mm-hmm. Justin Shanks podcast, who we're actually yep. chatting with in a couple hours mm-hmm. today. And nice. you've been on Michael Trainer's podcast, who's like a really good yep. friend of ours that we go way back mm-hmm. with. And I was just like, I was blown away. I was like, how have we it's not crossed sign. paths yet? So I'm a sign. sneaky guy in the background nobody knows about. <laughs> it's all good. I'm going I'm, I'm to be like that in like two years, like that overnight success. Like he just popped out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and you've done, done like nothing with your life podcasts. before, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just a loser. <laughs> I'm a loser, baby. <laughs> I love it. Well, well take us back, man. Yeah. yeah let's get into it. I know there, there's something that, that I will probably nerd out for a minute with you on, which is American Ninja Warrior. Me and my family are like huge fans. So we could touch on that in a minute, but let's, let's get your, your backstory a little bit because i know like your backstory is kind of what created the person you are today so let's yeah let's kind of let, let's dig into that a little bit yeah, yeah so i was uh i was given away three years old to a foster care system in california that was not a very good system it's it's better now it's not way better but it's you know, difficult and and yeah man so i started my life in this realm of not feeling like i mattered mom didn't love me enough to keep me and so i just got i just experienced a lot of craziness in the foster care system and landed in a home which is my home now uh, hmm. only black person in an all white family really poor growing up and so like a lot of my identity has always kind of been unstable and unclear like i don't know who i am where i fit where i belong it's just it was tough man in school was a bad kid in school stinky kid in school too uh <laughs> It's a lot of craziness. And so after 11 years in a system, got adopted at 14, tried Whoa. it for football. Uh, it's really, horrible. How many, how, how many homes do you, because I have, I have six. some uh, six shit. Okay. Six. Yeah. But the thing is the majority were from three till six. I bounced around from five, from three till six. And it's just a crappy situation, man. Yeah. They just, people treat you right. I was beaten and starved and tortured. Weird stuff, dude. Oh. People, people are, can be a little bit crazy. And so I've since forgiven and moved on. It's really, truly like I've, I've worked with that, that aspect of just like, who is, who is Anthony and how he, you know, looks at those people and condemns them. It's like, Hey, hmm. some people suck, man, move on. Like, so I just do my thing. Good. But yeah. So progressed on was still a shutdown kid, but my adoptive mom and the family I got adopted by, man, she opened me up pretty well. Like she, she gave me some good love and perspective and it allowed my emotional barrier to come down. Good. Tried up football my first year at 14 years old, which is well behind peers. And I was garbage. They, uh, <laughs> you call it poo trash. That's bad. Man. <laughs> and Technical term. <laughs> It's technical term. It's a, a scientific term. <laughs> then, what uh, what position or positions? At the time, I was uh, tsh, tsh, tsh. man. At the time, I want to say I was linebacker, quarterback. My first year as a oh. quarterback. All right. I never played in the game. A guy named Michael Belser. His his dad was a coach. So I practiced. I was the starter in practice. Never played in the game. Oh, okay. How crazy is that? Starter That's in weird, practice. Yeah. Super weird. If, if, if he never mind, I was gonna say a dumb joke. I'm gonna say the joke. If he wasn't a black guy, I say it was because I was black. That's the joke. It's a, a dumb joke. Just yeah. ride with hey, it, man. I have a lot of weird. Yeah, I have a lot of weird stuff. I grew up in an all white family, so we have a lot of weird racial jokes that aren't even serious in any way whatsoever. Oh, um, let no, everything so, out here. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Let it all ride. Yeah, and then we uh, then I ended up progressing into playing a couple of years. It was bad. My mom got diagnosed with MS, and then mm. eventually I had this like, wake up call of like I want to be great at this game. And so I started doing all this crazy work that really no 15 year old should be doing, but I did. And, it, and I, the next year I came back, my was it junior, sophomore year, sorry, sophomore year of high school, a baller. Like I just was an angry, mean, faster, stronger kid. And, uh, and progressed on to get a college scholarship. You know, I was your know, homecoming king, you know, cutest couple in the yearbook with my, my girlfriend at the time. Went on to college on a scholarship, played the University of Oregon, which is where that helmet comes Ducks. from. There, oh, there it is. We yeah. played our last game uh, in college. Was in the, uh, what was it, Pacific Life Holiday Bowl in San Diego. Yeah, oh, but I got a trophy. I got a big whale trophy up here. You can't see it. From, I've seen that in other game. You did? You oh. did? Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. I lost. We lost the game, but I still got defense MVP. Oh, so that's the trophy. Oh, that's bitching, nice. man. Good for you. Isn't that dope? Hell I'm yeah. messing around. I, I robbed or stripped Adrian Peterson at the goal line because ah. he put the ball out over the goal line. And I, I grabbed it before it went over the goal line and I got the turnover. They didn't, oh, they didn't score that time. They still won, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. But then it progressed on and, and you know ended up you know playing the NFL for a few years, tore my shoulder my third year, came home, 
broke my life. I'd opened this gym business because my degrees in kinesiology and hmm. I'd lost my identity, like major crisis. Because anybody, yourselves, myself, when you've put time into something and it's no longer something you can do, whether it's a kid going to college, leaving the military, somebody passed away, relationship falls apart, whatever it might be, when you've given it all and you can't do it anymore, like hmm. it breaks you. You don't even know who you are. Yeah, I don't know who I was without football. And so I tried to find him again in this gym and Ended up going broke, had a couple more kids. I married my high school sweetheart, had a couple more kids because I had one when I was in sophomore in college. Mm -hmm. And and so now I got three kids. I'm not present, you know, a few, like maybe a year in, I found she's having an affair, breaks my world apart. Mm. So that I'm like, I got this business that's falling apart. I'm like nine months in, I was almost bankrupt. Every two weeks for six years, I could barely pay rent and payroll. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I have this marriage falling apart. I'm not a present dad. I'm spending more time with other people's kids than my own. Uh, my body's out of shape and like I still hate like I can't even watch football just everything that made me me was just gone Ugh. and I legit drove off one night and like this this wave of emotion sent a text said please tell my kids that her father was and went looking for rat poison mm -hmm. and and thankfully didn't find any mm -hmm. stopped by this, this side of the road in a town called Stockton it's like the armpit of one of the armpits of California yes it is yep. <laughs> I've been through that yeah yep. and yeah yeah I just <laughs> sat there they got a college there too. I'm like, why would you want to go to college out there? <laughs> why Sorry, would you pay for that? Folks. <laughs> it's just a weird, dry, I don't know. It feels like it's just a town full of like liquor stores. It's awkward. <laughs> so uh, the cops find me by GPS and I, you know, I can talk. I got away with words. And I'm like, oh, my wife, she's just tripping. And she, I don't know what she's talking. But like, then just head home. So I head home. There's like 30 people in front of my house all looking for me. Mm. Ridiculous shame. And it's a buddy of mine planted a seed. He's like, first off, don't ever do that again. Like he said harsher words, but I don't know if we can cuss. I'm not a cuss or anything. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not a big cussing guy. That's he's fine. like, you know, uh, he's like, don't, don't ever do it again. And secondly, he says, I thought I lost a hero. Really weird because you don't, like, buddies don't say that. It's not, and I played high school football with the buddy. Like, it's just a guy, good dude. And I was like, what are you talking about? He says, there's people in this community, man. We, we've watched what you've done and you inspire a lot of people just by how you've lived your life, by what you've gone from where you've gotten to, man. I was like, interesting. So he planted the seed, which was, Maybe all the craziness of my life, which I haven't even gotten into all the depths of crazy, had a purpose. And it wasn't a time for me to water that seed because I was still reeling from craziness. Like, I'm not going to go start talking about life can be great. Like, that's <laughs> not my, that's, that's not your lines, man. It's not your lines. And so I, I went through the waves of just life. Because you know when you get crappy stuff happen, it's just a fog. Everything. And we go into out. this, yeah. I don't want to talk to anybody. I just, I was there for years, just, you know, like yeah. years. I ended up moving my, my gym to a new place. I ended up living in a 500 square foot studio apartment. In a, a twin bed, Whoa. and my twins would, my kids, would, like my twins and my son would sleep on the the air mattress next to the bed, like, and I'd get them dressed for school. And this, I mean, it was just, oh man, it was That's bad. Rough. It was like a, it was smaller than my dorm room in college. I'm a grown man after the NFL. Yeah. I got a nine thousand square foot gym that I'm I own. You know, like it's hella weird. <laughs> yeah, that is <laughs> so wow. crazy. And just the facade, man. I I would go in the morning and train clients and go home and drink a six pack of Blue Moon and go back to work later. Mm. Didn't like me, man. Just didn't like me. I would mess relationships up. I'd you know be with some women and I steered clear from my face. So I was doing a Playboy thing, and then eventually, was it April fifteenth, twenty fourteen, man? This is you know it's all taking place from eleven to fifteen, and then I find out my you know this my mom is sick, and we go to the hospital, and she loses her battle with you know with MS. Seventeen mm. years. I'm holding her hand. I watch her final breath, and like a, a seed kind of started getting watered, which was, man, this woman helped me become like a non-statistic. Because in foster care, 75% of inmates in prisons in America are, are mm -hmm. former foster kids. I've, Any uh, you know, homeless I've, population? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've fostered a f uh, seven kids and one for 15 months. So I know exactly what you're talking about. The system's yeah, not dude, good. Just it's broken. Yeah. Eats us up and spits us out. And it's just all we can do is we're mad at the world. And then mm -hmm. even good people like yourself, we don't let them in sometimes. It's just this weird dynamic and yeah. hella hard. Yeah. And so we uh, just, you know, I beat these odds. And, and so this woman was the reason I was like, damn, like her body robbed the ability for her to reach her full potential. But she helped me reach some of mine. So I had this thought of like, maybe it's time to have this perspective of, something I can do with this weird life of mine, these things I've accomplished. Because by this time, I got this massive contract with uh, Pacific Gas and Electric for like $250,000. I'd been traveling the world speaking and doing some really cool stuff, but really not settled inside still. Still mm -hmm. dynamics of just the relationship. And I hadn't really focused on it. And so I was like, I want to start talking about my story. And I actually happened across a guy named Brendan Burchard through a, mm -hmm. a company I was consulting with. And like, oh, this dude, teach that to put stuff on the internet and sell it. And I was like, blasphemy. That's <laughs> not real. And, and so I showed up to this event. It's a bunch of people hanging out and hugging and, you know, yeah. out in Santa Clara, which is about, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half south of me. And I was like, man, this is really cool. So in the same, listen to this. My mom passed in April. 
May and then June hits. June, I have this contract for quarter million. Mm -hmm. I have uh, the gym, the lease is up. So I can actually close the gym and not oh. have to owe anything for the rent. And I get this, uh, this um, window of like understanding how to be able to take my story from Brandon, what he shared to go and, and do it in the world. So I was like, man, God opened this weird window in June of 2014. Like, hey, son, go chase them. <laughs> so I was like, all right, starting on this path of just navigating, figuring things out. Companies used to be called Trust or Hustle all about hustling what you do. And then I just built up over the years and then got to January 1st, 2016. and had one of those weird moments of like, this, this, this is just bad. So I wake up, I'd gone to Russia and like, you know, done a presentation. And this woman who was in Russia, uh, I'd met her and we hung out, we'll mm -hmm. call it at night and <laughs> didn't even speak my language. Super weird. And at the time you're like, oh yeah, traveling and you got some money and you're meeting people. And then but I woke up on, on January 1st because she'd come in from New Year's, for New Year's, and it was just this feeling of shame. Like, my kids, I would never want my kids to be like this, ever. I would never want my kids to see me like this. I, like, my God wouldn't let me into heaven, and my mom, man, she would mm. be disgusted looking at me. And it was this feeling of, like, something's got to change because I'm still not this good dad. I'm, I'm relationship sucks. It was just weird. And so I made this decision. I'm like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swear off women for a while. <clears throat> so I, like, I went celibate besides lotion for like a good chunk of time. <laughs> and, uh, and I just kind of like I went internal, bro. And I had these weird, hard conversations of who in the world are you in? This is where identity became this, this spearhead, this kind of figure. And at this time, I still didn't know I was, this is what I was working on. So I started looking at like, you know, what trust you also meant and how it operates and, and kind of was my, my build up. But really, it was like fix hand. Like I'm the common denominator. We're all the common denominator of our problems. And I hadn't dug into it. Mm. So I dug into it. And I was like, all right, why is your marriage falling? Why did that fall apart? And I was like, well, she made a crappy choice and you blamed her for years. Aunt. But let's be honest, like you were gone from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. She had three kids, twin brand new babies to deal with. You were not a good husband. Yeah. She didn't do that to hurt you. She did it to help her. Mm -hmm. So I was like, ah, all right, crappy choice. But it took two people, myself included, to get her to a place where she even felt she had to make a choice in the first place. Mm -hmm. These kids I was training, like I love the way that I had these kids at this gym, but like I'd left that I still wasn't being that present father and show up to games and stuff. I was like, dude, you're not being a good dad. That's on you. Like yeah. sucks. Stop being that guy. Wasn't in shape. Wasn't taking my body. I was like, dude, take care of your body. And then business wise, like be better. Like learn how to really cross the finish lines to then go teach people stuff. Because it's still that imposter syndrome. I wasn't living this life consistently the way I was telling people to live. And so I started kind of adjusting. And nine months later, uh, weird, my, my world flips around. After nine months of having some really hard conversations with myself and other people, I even went and had a conversation with the guy my wife had to fare with. Wow. Like, not your common things you do. Dude, that's squashed, some balls we'll call right there. Squashed it. Yeah. it was weird, man. It was really... <laughs> Those I were not that. easy times, no. but I know I knew I needed to do it because I needed to get past the, the darkness that was inside of me. And I did, man. And so fast forward nine months and my wife and I got back together, uh, wow. not because of the kids or anything, but like because of us. And we have a phenomenal marriage now. My body, I take care of it. I'm in shape. I feel good about myself. Business is great because of what I'm able to do and impact people's lives because I learned about this process of, of what I do. And at that time, we still trust or hustle. Mm -hmm. Not even a year later, I'm sitting in this mastermind. It's like, uh, so Brendan Burchard, I'm one of the few humans probably ever, I went from being a person that just randomly showed up to an event and I then speak on stage years later. Like I speak on a stage as across the, wherever is his stage of hell. And, uh, and yeah, so I'm in this mastermind. It's like me and, and there's Brendan, there's like Russell Brunson, mm -hmm. Jeff Walker, Lewis House, Trent Shelton, all these amazing names. Uh, Craig Clemens, I'm going to miss some names, but they all know I love them. <laughs> and, and one of the guys, I'm telling him about my, my story and what I do and he goes, I don't like it. I go, what do you mean? He goes, the stress house thing. I don't like it. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> That's my <laughs> identity now. Huh? <laughs> but this is, this is who, this is what I do. And he goes, you know what? He goes like, he's a message of messenger. Like there's a person that talks about it. You're the, you're the charismatic speaking. But the message, he's like, doesn't line up with the messenger. He's like, we all hustle in here. He's like, but what I'd like to know is like, how did you navigate all those different parts of your identity that some people never get past? Mm -hmm. You've done multiple. He's like, well, I don't, he's like, I, how do you get in this room? Like, how did you, how are you here? I was like, oh, I don't know. And then the conversation, the group was like, yeah, no one's talking about identity. Like there should be a discussion. So I'm like, all right. It's like around, I think it's like the, the beginning of 2017. And so I went kind of home and started like kind of just really sticking into kind of the groove of what it looked like and doing research and realized like probably 90% of the content I'd created for Trust or Hustle was somehow oddly rooted in the processes that that identity goes through. It was weird how it worked. It's subconscious so probably, started, huh? It's coming out. It was always there, you know? And so I shifted the business 
to identity at that time. And I started looking into the books and the science and the stars and journals. I, journals, I still do go to journals and articles to read and the science behind it. Mm-hmm. I started realizing like, man, the reason I'm successful, because at that point I you know, played in you know, the NFL, I'd actually been an American Ninja Warrior. Mm-hmm. Uh, so mm-hmm. it's a really cool experience. I've been on National Geographic. I've done other TV shows. I just got done filming another one I can't nice. talk about yet. Yeah. <laughs> so I've done these cool things, but also built businesses and all these amazing things. And it's like, it wasn't because of the books and information because I didn't have a lot of it. Mm-hmm. I, and I, I hustled hard, but it's because it was who I am to do that. Like I found ways that people couldn't find ways. And so I have like this Midas touch for certain aspects now. And I realized that, man, a lot of it's rooted in our identity. Our success really comes and goes with, with the aspect of who we are, not what we have and what we know. Because hmm. who you are will find out what you need to know and what you need to have. It's a weird dynamic. And so as I dug into it, I realized like that's where my, my heart is. I love having conversations with people and having a unique way to press them into a, uh, an uncomfortable area. But I understand why now. Or understand mm-hmm. why they've been uncomfortable or hit an upper limit or have you know, this invisible chain holding them back. Because once people grasp and see what it is, well, now you can fix it. Yeah. And so uh, I found that a lot of people, it's interesting, I have these conversations. This is what gets under my skin of all things. People always say like, hey, want to come on and talk about mindset? I see you do mindset. No, I don't. <laughs> or I'll have a conversation and people say, hey, can you go on my summit? Uh, I love you to talk about mindset. No, I don't talk about mindset. Well, why don't you talk about mindset? I can, but it's not a whole key of it. There's actually science that shows no matter how strong your mindset is, if you don't have a self categorization or an identity in the area, the mindset doesn't work for you. Yeah. You're actually wasting time working on a mindset if you haven't yet or are not currently working on your identity. That's why, like, professional athletes come out of football, powerful minds. I had a great mindset, dude. I played professional football. You need I knew how to yeah. work, how to grind, <laughs> right? But then I got into the gym business and I felt like a loser. I was unsuccessful. I couldn't get it done because I didn't feel I was a gym owner. Mm-hmm. I was a mm-hmm. guy, I was a football player who tried to run a gym. Yep. It's different. And so as I start talking to people and like having people understand this, there's a definitive like line where if you understand where your identity is, you'll see how identity is the thing, the tool you can utilize to achieve any kind of dream. And it comes with mindset. It's actually one of the six core aspects. Hmm. But that's what I teach now. That's where my life kind of has, has oddly, I want to say almost accidentally come to a head. Because <laughs> even with all these things I've done, there's no guarantee I have the skills to be a speaker or the heart to help people like my mom. Because when my mom passed, I was like, man, she unconditionally loved me to help me reach a level of potential I didn't even know was possible. And that's what I love to do is like the best way I can have her name carry on is for me to unconditionally love on people and teach them how to reach their full potential through mm-hmm. understanding how to architect and activate your ideal identity for everyone to achieve. When you can do that, man, I see people do some cool, I got clients that like, they, they have this sense of like, oh, that's not who I am. And I like, I play with their head a little bit. And I've had clients launch like in four months and make, you know, like in four weeks, one person in four weeks made 85 grand <clears throat> from a Jeez. product that didn't exist before like four days earlier. That's the best. And I had clients, <laughs> yeah, I got clients that we'd be like six hours of work and then launch a, pro- a program. And it's not even that I made them, it's not strategy really. Most people have the information and strategy. Mm-hmm. They're just doing nothing with it. It's like, <laughs> there's a not? blockage oh, somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I can't, I just, it's weird. And when I get those, those things out of the way, like people launch, one woman in six weeks launch a $45,000 product. Nice. One guy, Frank, good dude. He uh, he's in New York, and he when we first came on, I was like he sold a business for one point one million. Was struggling to get three thousand plus a month coming in in a different business, and we worked on some things of identity and pushing through. He's making like thirty five thousand dollars a month right now. Like <laughs> wow. vast difference. And this, this is the business people. I've got people that have fixed marriages after infidelity, like I did. I've got people that have fixed marriages that are super struggling. Um, I've had people you know get better jobs. Like it's just interesting when you still do, like look at what it is in the background. Anybody that is an ambitious, dream driven human. When you apply the stuff that I teach, man, it makes life like, awesome. Yeah. So that's my story. You got to help know if a story, I went man. In line <laughs> to go. <laughs> there's no there's no barriers here other than uh, just making sure you're out of here for your next call. <laughs> but, uh, but dude, I, I, I'm a, uh, and I know there's a part of the story I think you want to get to, but uh, I'm curious really quick, like on the darkness, you mentioned like the darkness within, like, yeah. because like we all struggle with some kind of darkness, I would imagine, like sometime we in do. our lives. Like, how did you... Because, you know, there's so many layers of that darkness, at least in your story and everyone else is like an onion. But um, I guess I don't even know how to ask this, but like, how do you approach that or identify that you even, I guess you have to notice like you have this darkness or this weird feeling inside of you. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah we know. We, yeah. we know. We just had to hide it. Here's where I can, yeah. you can tell if you have the darkness, if you're trying to distract yourself. If you don't like being alone, yeah. 
if you're not good by yourself in a room, you got some darkness. It may not be a lot, but for me, I, that's what we distract with drugs and alcohol and beers and, you know, women and men like that. We distract ourselves. We'll always be with people. If you find yourself incredibly uncomfortable alone, you feel yourself drawn to your phone to text people or call people or go out to eat. That's how you know for sure there's something going on. Mm -hmm. And any kind of darkness, if you want to not feel dark, you put light on it. Mm -hmm. And and essentially light is bringing to the world because the problem most of us have is like, we don't want to see it ourselves and oh man, we don't want the world to see it. Oh no, right? Because what if they feel bad and we as humans need acceptance. And so when I don't have the acceptance, I feel really bad. So I'll hide that stuff so nobody sees it. And then, you know, it's just a scary thing and it compounds, compounds, yeah. compounds. Then you got people that want to start businesses, but they're afraid to push because there's something in the past that if they push out, that one person might out them on social media. There's dynamics. And it's like, it's like layers. Yeah. Mm, because it's right? interesting. Yeah. And the business is probably the outer shell of all of that. I mean, for most people, I would think it's like you, you have yourself as the core, you know, like you better mm -hmm. be loving yourself first mm -hmm. and all that stuff because you can't love yeah. others or even your customers or your wife, kids, all that stuff, unless you got yourself covered at the core. You got to, because it all stems from you. Like there's a lot of things that, that people don't realize is usually in life, we get the darkness because something happened, something fell off, something we earned, fell apart, or we damaged something, which is like a fruit of life. Mm -hmm. If you kind of think of it kind of like a tree that has a piece of fruit on it, the fruit withers off and it dies. And we feel like that fruit, like it all goes to the wayside and we like feel like nothing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will spend the rest of their life feel like a piece of dead fruit, just dead, right? But then I like over years realized like, oh wait, I was never the fruit. I was always the tree. We're always the tree. The tree produced the fruit. Yeah. So I was the guy that got the NFL, the guy that built the business. I was that guy. But in my head, I thought I was the thing I'd created. And so when we don't realize that, we don't water the tree roots. We don't give it nutrients. We don't prune the branches. The tree dies. And then we feel dead, like you said, dark. Mm -hmm. And so you got to go back and give it some nutrients. And a lot of it comes with, if it's a dark outside area, you got a, a can of water, and you don't know where to put the water, you're never going to fix anything. So a lot of people, they're dark and they don't want to shine a light. Therefore, the work they do is wasted. They're pouring water on a, a, on a plot of land. The tree is 100 yards away. Or it's on not, the apple or whatever the fruit is itself. It's like, yeah, that like gonna, that's a hell of an analogy, yeah. man. Like, because if you're the tree and we are like, you have all these branches and directions that are going and each one of them are part of you, of course, but yeah. it doesn't make you who you are. Exactly. That's exactly. Like so that. that's, that's a lot of the simple stuff I try to tell people when we work on things. And then what happens for like trying to get the dark out of you is you got to share with the world, man. And that's the hardest thing, but the most freeing thing. Hmm. So like issues with my marriage, um, you know, situations, you know, prior to when I got arrested in high school, like dumb things. I wrote a book and just got it all out. I'm like, right, it's in the light now. Hmm. Like Eminem and Eight Mile, like yeah, there's man. nothing you can say to me. Yeah. There's, there's nothing in my dark past that, that is not enlightened now. Because then what happens, it's like, oh, I'm free. And when you put it out there, you're like, oh, wait, nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> like, and nobody it feels really, so good, man. Like, and then everything yeah. else is just like, we do that on the podcast. Yeah. Like almost every single episode is just throw yeah. out some stuff that's been weighing on us, something that we, we screwed up, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the darkest stuff, we'll put it out there. And it just makes us, yeah, we get the best. I mean, we say this all the time, but yeah. like so many people relate and they write to us because of things like that. It's not the tactics yeah. and all that. It's, it's being real. Yeah, yeah. Being very transparently real. And if yeah. you want to grow your business nowadays, if that's kind of a thing mm -hmm. for people, 100% your key is going to be having the discussions that somebody else can't have. And when they yeah. hear you, they're they're in, you know enamored by who you are because like, wow, this person's got the chump chops and the gumption just to share that. Oh, I want to pay attention. Mm -hmm. And they pay attention, man. It's really just a matter of that. And not enough people do that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The, the American Ninja Warrior stuff, we could talk about it if I feel like we have time towards the end, because I really want to get to the important stuff, the stuff that, you know, yeah. <laughs> let, let's talk about the identity stuff. So I'm, I'm, to I'm not totally sure where to start, but like how how does somebody sort of like identify what their current identity is so that they yeah. know to even shift it? Hmm. Yeah, well, even even then, they'd have to understand why they would want to. Mm -hmm. the, the way I explain it is uh, it will go a little science, so we'll go left brain, we'll come back to right brain. Perfect. So to understand why we even want to shift it. Cause that's mm -hmm. part of it. like, okay, what, what is it? Why is even the point of it? Cause some people be like, what's the, why would I do that? Aunt? But how's it going to help me? Here's how. So <laughs> you think about it. Like I, I have this picture in my head of identity equals success and the success was put a t thing, whatever you want it to be. If you want more money, you want a better body, whatever, whatever your version of what you want to achieve maybe. What happens is that the equal sign is like the dash on like somebody's, you know, you know, call it casket. It's the important piece. And it really is. So if you think about the science of it, the brain, if somebody said, Hey, um, who are you? There's a part in our brain called the default mode network, DMN actually. And it lights up when your identity is, is engaged. Here's the crazy thing. When I ask you who you are, it shuts down. The rest of your brain lights up and starts describing things you've done or you've accomplished or 
it's weird, right? Like the it's attributes just, of that thing. Because <clears throat> yeah. you're thinking about who you are. I'm a dad and I'm a father and I'm a, but it's interesting because that's not really communicating who you are. Because right. you can also say you're a dad and you can also say you're a mom and you can also say you're a business owner. Is that who you are, right? Hmm. But here's a crazy thing. If I'd stopped talking to you and you went to daydream and you started thinking about how you felt about the job or the person or your judgments you see, it's interesting. Now that thing lights up. Because now you're, you're not thinking about it like who you are is coming to fruition. In fact, it's like the natural organic flow. That's just who you are. So it's crazy. Who you are is who you are when you're not thinking about who you are. Make sense? It's always <laughs> the inverse, right? It's, like, it's it super always, weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's like everything. So yeah. yeah. now, now, how does that tie to success? Okay, so that means the way that I am, that's pretty much how I, am, I, I just am. I'm being, we'll call it. Right. And that is essentially how you just operate. Like, I operate. I mean, when you think about someone operating, like they're just in flow. Mm -hmm. I'm like the, the baseball player. I feel like the, the ball's in the air. He's not thinking about right foot, left foot, my hand here. He's just in flow. Yeah. yeah. Getting that ball snatches you out of the air. stripping right? the ball operating. from Adrian Peter, Peterson, all that flow, <laughs> right? Same thing, dog. You know, you're, it's, it's secondary nature. You're not even processing. Your body's just reacting. That's your identity. That's who you are. How you respond to situations, how you have conversations, how your face looks when somebody says something to you. If you flinch when somebody you know steps into you, mm -hmm. these are little things we don't think about all day. When somebody cuts me off in traffic, my boss says something. These are I just react and I'm not even thinking about it. That's who you are. How you operate. Now, how you operate determines how you perform. Now, whether or not I perform consistently or poorly or well, it's, it's due to the way I see a problem, approach an opportunity, if it's an opportunity or problem to me, all these dynamics, but it, it will determine how I perform, high performer, low performer. Yeah. How I perform determines my success. I perform well as a baseball guy again, right? I've practiced, I've done all this stuff to work on. I'm a baseball player and I react and I flow like this. Balls in the air, I turn, cut, run, go. I perform this way to catch the ball. My performance gives me a good success, more money better team, better, you know, I get to start, whatever it is. Yep. And so for a lot of people not understanding that realistically, that identity that you can actually craft, you can architect, and it's not this woo-woo thing. It actually comes from actions that you do. You have to, in fact, like architect it, create what you want, and then you program it by taking action. Literally what it is. It's just, it's, it's kind of that simple, but not. Mm -hmm. But I do things. And after a while, it becomes this new normal for you. Now I'm operating differently. Now I perform differently. Now I have success. That's the first part of it. So that is why it's concrete in my head for people to, uh, to do that. Now, a lot of people, unfortunately, they're like, I just got to work my mindset, man. I know what to do. I got to work my mindset. I, I, right. I, all the time. I know what to do. I just got to do it. Oh, yeah? Cool. All right. You would have done it by now. How long have you been trying to do that? Oh, like six months, a year. Okay. I would have done it in six hours. Mm. And I'm not better than you. It's just who I am to do that kind of stuff. Now, how do we get you there? It's a big piece. Like, how do I get somebody to this level? Well, the first part is to understand, like, it's okay to, to not be great right now. It's okay to suck. You got you to gotta have a point at which you accept the fact that I'm boo-boo trash, poo trash, we'll call it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> at that thing, right? Yeah. And then you lean into the space of like, all right, well, how do I take these next steps in? And essentially what it is, is I look at, I, it's just called the shift method is what I use. See, shift, sustain. Too many people go right to the work of stuff. We're yeah. good at trying to do stuff, but the problem is we'll do it haphazardly or halfway or we won't even do the right work. We'll end up like the, the metaphors, like, you know, have a ladder against a building, climb this ladder, huff and puff, get to the top of the building and realize, oh, the ladder's leaning against the wrong building. That's right. Like yeah. we end up like it's, and it happens for a lot of people that get burnt out and they're like, I've spent so much time. Why am I not farther ahead by now? Like what's going on? Yeah. And it, what it was is you didn't do the right work, right? That's, that's essentially what it boils down to. And the hard thing to do for a lot of people in the very beginning is to go back and say, what do I really need to work on? That's what I had to do in the business. And early on, I had to do it in the marriage. I had to do it as a parent. Like a lot of different areas, I had to dig in and, and really take a look and see what in the world is this thing. My, my wife's dropped me a whole bunch of these, these yogurts. She just dropped like Ooh, yeah. That's the best. <laughs> oh, uh, like just Four of them. Nice. How many yogurts does she think I need? <laughs> <laughs> she ain't leaving her. You ain't leaving oh, for a while. <laughs> I mean, my belly big, baby. Um, but no, like that's the thing. Is, so I got to figure out these things I got to work on. And it usually comes with a lot of pain of acceptance. It's the things that you, that you have to admit, like, I suck at this or I'm not good. Because if not, you don't do the right work. And now you end up spinning your wheels and, and burning out money and burning out energy and willpower. You never get anywhere. Well, that's so cool. A that, lot of it that for me is framing as like, I suck at this. Like, I don't think most people ever admit that because they're like, no, nah, I'm good enough or I push through this. It's like, but now you ground right. yourself so damn low. Yeah. You're like, I suck yeah. at whatever this thing is. Yeah. And it's now okay. let's rebuild. Is, yeah. That's the darkness. Yeah. That's what you're talking about. How do I get that out? Well, put a, put a light on it. Like, mm. I suck at this. I'm a sucky bad. I'm a sucky husband. I'm a sucky business owner. It's okay. Because now what happens, I've given myself permission to pursue yeah. better things. Yeah. Until you do that, you're not going to. 
And so that's why a lot of people will spend time dating the same person with a different name because mm-hmm. they never understand how to fix a relationship because it's same person. Do y'all, you, you do this, you do this. Actually, the person accepts me for me. No, no, no. You need, you need to accept you for you, like, first off. Yeah. And then you can be a better human in a relationship because you are not the relationship. The relationship's relationship, you're one of the two people in it. And sometimes what you want from a relationship, you have to give. It's a different understanding. And so now that I'm there, like, all right, now I know what to do. Now I can do the shift work. And the shift work's the hard actual work. Most people, they don't realize this is a true reality, but I hear the statement, I've done everything I can. Um, I've worked so hard. I, I don't know what else to do. That right there, humongous red flag that you got some shift work to do. You got to stretch. Because here's the thing, the dream you have is typically up here, right? I want to have this, whatever this thing is. And your level of, of maximum overwhelm is way down here. Hmm. You keep telling us, that's all I can do. That's all I can do. No, no, no. To you, relatively, it's all you can do. It feels like a lot because you don't know what to do and you're not willing to push more. This is that we'll call it the comfort zone level people run into. Right. And I had a client on before this and he's giving me this kind of rundown of why he hasn't done some things and what's going on. Is a lot going on. And I say, okay, hey, simple question. If I was to you know, talk to the person who has all the things you've told me you want, would they use the excuse you just said about everything being too hard? <laughs> oh, and he no. sits and he goes, no. <laughs> right? And it's the truth because when you think about the person who has what you want, they don't even blink at the things that are shutting you down right now. That's right. So how do you expect to have what you want? Like it's not going to happen. And so in the shift work, a lot of people, my true purpose is to present you with moments where you want to stop. I need to get you those levels where you want to stop because just like in a workout, when I've taxed myself and I'm about to throw up, it's only at that moment where I know if I take one more rep, I'm getting better for sure because I want to do this right now. That's right. It's the same in life. Well, that extra five minutes, 10 minutes, that extra email, that extra video you don't want to do that you'll easily talk yourself out of and like, but I got to go and make dinner. Yeah. You got five minutes to record a video, woman. Like you can, it's okay, you know? <laughs> there is a, I, I think there's this. a line in uh, what can't like, hurt me um, uh, with uh, Jesus, the book. Um, yeah. Can't hurt me. David Goggins. I there you go. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. He I didn't was know saying, you were asking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I was just trying to make the reference there. But I, what you just said there, he always pushes himself like a little further. If he has to run a mile, yeah. he's going to go like a mile point one or whatever. But it's like yeah. proving that you can always go a little bit more. You got yep. more in the back. Yeah. You always have more in the back. And when you when you start to understand that and actually try to do that, because one thing to understand it, hard thing to do it. What happens over time, you keep stretching and stretching to where now what's hard for you is easy. That's why people are successful who have the things you want. It looks easy. It's weird. Like it just looks like it's so hard because here's the thing. It's a statement that I love. And I tell people the root of my work is in this, what you create creates you. If you think about creation as a process though, like it's, it's this art, like that mile point one on day one, mile point two on day two, mile point three. And it's a creation process. It is ugly and it's dirty and it yeah. sucks and it's hard. But on the back end of that, you don't do all that work and go, I don't know if that's who I am. Like, now you're like, that's who I am. Like, that's, hey, hold on. That's, <laughs> ah, right? Yeah. So now it becomes this, this separate feeling of it. First, there was pain and anguish when doing it. You're trying and there's willpower to where now it's so much who you are. It feels awkward to not do it. Mm. Like, think about ladies. I see it all the time as a good example. Women who like, you know, you look at their social media when they're in shape. Go back a year ago. They weren't posting it. They had like pictures of like eagles and, you know, and weird stuff. You know what I'm talking about? You go to Facebook. Weird yeah, yeah, now, they're, now they're hot. You yeah. know, and they're doing now, all this now it's like a picture of I, my yoga pants and I got my, my food and like mm-hmm. the pictures with the, the back turned, the butt cheeks in the mirror. Yeah. Yeah. It's a whole different dynamic. Well, why do they do that? Because they've done the creation work. They created the confident self inside. And as people will simplify and say, oh, I just got to do some work. I don't know, you do the right work because you can do work and do the wrong work and you get to the point of feeling even worse than before because now you're more invested and more broke. <laughs> like it's a That's right. whole different dynamic. But once you get to that point and you've had this entrance of, of understanding how to do the right work and architecting who you want to be, because there's, there's, it's more than just, I want to be happy. It's like, who do I want to be in beliefs and thoughts and actions? My mindset's a big part of it, actually. Habits I have and personal pride. When you structure those, and I call it the hard way, habits, actions, drivers, and, and uh, sorry, habits, actions, reactions, and drivers. When I program what I want those to be and then weave them in, like when my clients get done, we have it down to like a 15 minute science of every day. Hmm. Do we just go to work then? And I just push them to limits and I push them past. We push them to it and push them past. <laughs> I kick the ball, run up to it, kick the ball, run up to it. And so we build then over time. There's this look back and there's not a moment in time. There's not some day where it's like, hey, Tuesday, the 23rd at 7 p.m. It's not. It's like, I don't know when, but like, I'm a bad man pajama right now. Like <laughs> I just, I'm dope. Right. Uh-huh. And it's a whole different confidence. 
And then the last piece is sustaining that over time. The C shift sustain. How do I make sure I don't go backslide? Because people do that. They backslide in life, you know. Oh, yeah. How do I stay in that trajectory? How do I have people around me that help me stay in that trajectory? Because it's just as hard to kick out bad people as it is to enter a space of people you feel are above you because you feel inadequate. Mm. I don't know if I'm ready for that group because what if they shun me? I'm not as good as them. And I'm in some of those groups right now, by the way. I'm in groups where I'm like, oh, I'm just going to be quiet over here in a corner. Somebody oh, kicks yeah. me out. You know, like, Dude, that's the best feeling. though, right? Like, yeah, we do the it same is, exact yeah. thing. We're like, let's just like risk it. What's, what are we risking? Really nothing. The, yeah, Our pride so maybe or like. <laughs> you know? That's what it is. Yeah. Because it's actually risking your identity. Yeah. And mm. that's the thing is what if somebody outs me for not being at a certain level and it's, and it's who I am. And so now I feel like I'm nobody. Mm. And once you get rid of that, you're like, oh, it doesn't matter. Like, so if so, Joe Blow doesn't like me and like, you know, I'm good. Let's keep on pressing. And I do my thing and I live my life. And that's why people who are successful have this weird sense of, I call it like a, like a, a foolishness, a playfulness with their success. Like if you think about like star athletes, you know, they're super playful. Like it's just loose. And if you think about it, it's, it's part confidence, but it's part also the fact that they realize this, they get into a workout with you. And you'll do their warm up, and you're dying. Mm -hmm. And they're like, <laughs> "That's my warm up." <laughs> it's play. It's like I'm yeah. still killing it. They'll do the whole workout, and, and they'll go do the thing, and you're like, "Go hike!" Like, how are you hiking after that? Like, how are you? That's who I am. I just gotta get it done, right? It's this level of like, I know I'm so far above the rest of normal people. We'll call it that. Like, I can have fun with this because even in my my good, it's way better than your great. Mm. Yeah. different sense of flow. And so for me, that's what I teach people to get to. And that's where when people get to the root of it, there's a lot of psychology that goes in the background of I give people pictures to understand why we're doing something. But once they get they're like, oh, I understand how if I actually shift this identity of who I am, what I'm not thinking about who I am, I can have success almost on autopilot. I call it like success becomes second nature. Hmm. And when you can learn to like achieve on autopilot to where the stuff you're doing now that's really hard, feels like a walk in the park, dude, it just starts to roll and flow. Yeah. And that's a beautiful space. That's what you see successful people doing. They work incredibly hard, but like they don't, they don't shut down like you do now. So they've done it's the work to that point. Yeah. They've yeah. architected and they've proven it to themselves and it, may, it might look like they're proving it to the world. You know, if they're posting, you know, on Instagram mm -hmm. or whatever it might be, but really it's, yeah, it's just anchoring. It seems like all these new actions or, you know, and building, yeah. building, building off of that Huge. identity. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, man. Did you want to go uh, American Ninja Warrior? You got something else here. No, oh, I think American <laughs> Ninja Warrior. I think there's some stuff we can pull from that story too. Yeah, no, there's one, <laughs> yeah, one example crazy. I was going to share that I think is kind of what you're talking about. When I, when I first started podcasting, I've been podcasting for about 10 years now. But before I was mm. podcasting, I was like super shy, super introverted. I was the opposite of the darkness you were talking about. My happy place <laughs> yeah. was when nobody else was around me, right? But <laughs> I started podcasting as my way to sort of open up and talk to people. And every single interview I did, I was like nervous. I was like, yeah. who am I to be talking to this person? They're on such a different level than me. Mm -hmm. And here we are 10 years later. And I don't think there's anybody that we could pull on the podcast that I would feel uncomfortable talking to now. Mm -hmm. But it's not yeah. something that I sort of put conscious thought to. It's just like looking back Happy. from where I was 10 years ago to where I am now is just sort of like a realization that like, holy shit, that's kind of what I did without thinking about it. And I think that's mm -hmm. that's kind of what you're saying. It was just like me exactly. putting myself out of my comfort zone and then just mm -hmm. the repetition. Every yeah. single new yeah. episode made it a little bit easier. And the thing is, you'll not, you can't point out to one episode that happened. It just happened, right? And on right, top right. of that, every single successful person any of us know has done this. They've all made the shift. They just, most of them have just done it unintentionally. They just willpowered it out and figured it out and went, right? So, so the idea is like, what if you could shortcut that? Mm. What if I could do that intentionally? That's what I do. So I take what some people will take three years to do. I do it in like three months mm. because now you're thinking about every step of the way. Like people who end up losing weight, so it's a good example. Most people are so sad. I want to lose 20 pounds. All they focus on is the fact that I haven't lost 20 pounds yet. Mm -hmm. That's it. They're only happy unless they've lost weight. They could lost 19 pounds. It wasn't 20, you know, but if you think about, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to focus on pound one, pound two, pound three. You're so in touch with the moments and enjoying so much along the way that when you get to 20, you're so used to just the process of enjoying the pounds. It's not that big of a straight, you feel good, yeah. mm -hmm. but you progress on and do more and more and more. Right. So the idea is like, how do I get you to, to do that intentionally and have joy before 20 pounds? How do I get you to have that, that before, because we're constantly presently aware of what we're doing. Yeah. It feels better when you get to 20, but you're not like waiting until, Oh, Oh, I just woke up. Oh, yeah. I, I read my goal. Okay, cool. Well, it's like you're, you're helping them it. architect like a journey for themselves, right? So they're not, oh, yes. they should have joy throughout the whole process because that's process. their time. Yeah. 
you're going to spend more time on the mountain than hiking it. Like, think about this. If you're taking a trip, where are you guys at? You're down in San Diego. Say yeah, I'm taking yeah. a trip to San Diego and I'm up here in San Francisco, you know, Bay Area. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to leave my house and like, I'm going to get a car. So like the car's late to pick me up. I get to the airport, the airport, you know, there's some delay of two hours. Uh, I eat some, you know, some cereal, some milk or something. And I, I got throw up in the bathroom the whole time on the airplane. I got food poison. I land, get to the hotel. My room's not ready. And I get to this amazing call. I don't know. What's a good hotel down there? Uh, the Coronado. Marriott. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The Coronado, yeah. right? Yeah. The, let's go to the thing. Maybe I got a, yeah. uh, what's the, what's the one? What's the, what's the nice hotel? There's a, has, there's like, a Coronado Dells. Like, Carlton. Oh, Ritz Carlton. Oh, okay. Ritz-Carlton. You want to go there? Yeah. Boom. Right. It's <laughs> Ritz Carlton. I show up and it, and I get there. The room's not ready, but then I get into it. I don't walk in the room and go, I'm in the room. Yeah. I feel great. I'm in yeah. the room. No, what happens is the room is cool, but you're still unhappy in the nice room. Yeah. So you get to the end of the destination, you're like, this stuff, oh, you know, you're, you're, I don't want to, oh, you know, close the but, drapes and you're like, screw it. I'm just going to sleep. Yeah. Bed, but yeah. if you have a good trip, maybe the car is late and you go to the airport and the airport, it's like, you know what? Uh, it's delayed, but I got some time to work on my, my book. I've been wanting to work on. I get in the airplane. I'm puking. Cool. I've been trying to lose weight anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I can't land. And like, the, you know, I get there and it's like, I get the hotel. It's not ready. Cool. I get to take a walk around the property. I see this cool person. Maybe I meet my wife. You see it a different perspective, right? And you enjoy it. You get to the room. You're like, oh icing on the cake. Mm. So what I'm trying to have people do is understand like, it's going to be hard. You're going to experience that. But if you understand how to operate, how to have an identity that sees it and feels it and flows through it vastly different, the world and life you live is different because now you're in a better place emotionally to keep giving energy in the moment when you arrive. Because the problem is if you operate off a feeling and if I feel like crap, I don't give fully of my energy. If I feel good, I'll give. I'll optimistically give. I look like a crazy person. I look like Kanye West just flowing. Yeah. Dude, nobody likes you, but everybody loves him. It's a weird dynamic. He doesn't care. <laughs> it's the yeah. truth. Yeah. The statement that people, you got to write this down, folks, for listening. You do not see situations as they are. You see them as you are. Mm. So say, the say one more time for the life, folks. Yeah, you don't see situations as they are. You see them as you are. If my identity is in this position where I'm seeing things a certain way as a filter, I experience it differently. I flow differently. I operate differently, which means if I operate poor, I have poor performance. I have poor success. But if I operate at a higher level, I have higher operation. I have a better performance. I have more success. Just natural, a natural aspect. And most people think they have to just guess through it and hope it happens. But you can legitimately take it to a concrete level of how your day runs. Like I've, I've almost ventured in the line of like looking at my work in terms of like kind of like productivity is what I would call it. But the problem is, is a lot of people are productive at things that are not useful to them. Sure. You're right. So it's like, I don't do that. But the root of the work I do, it boils down to concrete. Here's what you're doing for 15 minutes in the morning, the next 15, the next hour, the next two. We, the, seriously, I created a planner called the GPS planner. It's specifically, super structured. Yeah. But super, and so when I work my clients through the curriculum, it's like we're doing this stuff to a an organized thing where you're not guessing what to do with this work now. I think sometimes people give them like, here's some exercise to do, and it's like figure it out. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, we're going to teach you how to create this, and then how to actually activate it the right way in your life, and how to go through the process of like the crappiness. Because there's, I'll give you some ends, a little bit more of the, the the steps of my work: design, develop, deploy, debrief the four stages of shift. Design the ideal identity, architect it develop a plan around the actions that must be taken, the habits, actions, reactions, and drivers to make this come to life for one day I can believe it's who I am. You can't just sit there and say, I believe I can do this because you'll go home at one point your brain will say, shut up, idiot. No, you mm-hmm. don't. Like, you know, it happens. It's a natural part of us. Then what are the reactions? This is when people so often fail to plan out how will I react when X, Y, and Z happens? Because when you can think about the reaction, Ooh. you get a ton of control back. I like and that. And then the drivers. Why am I doing this in the first place? What are the drivers behind the reasonings is why I'm doing all these three things. When I can design that, then I can then deploy it into the world, which means I'm going to take action on it. A lot of people have deadlines. I have action days because deadlines are good. But we'll press into them and procrastinate. My 15-year-old son, oh my gosh, I hate how he procrastinates, dude. <laughs> I, want to, I want to like shove him in his face. We can't, I've been trying to watch the show, the, the next season two of The Boys, but I can't because the idiot's always got school <laughs> keeps, at the end keeps of the pushing night. It to the night. <laughs> yeah, he's watching his stupid YouTube videos like, bro, we can't even watch our show right now, man. That's how I feel. <laughs> Real time. And... Uh, but like what happens is now I get to the point of like, I, I take the actions and I, I go out and I deploy, I take the action, but I get met with the fact that I suck. This is the part mm-hmm. where it was the harsh people. They, they get met with a 10 of 10 of pain. This is horrible. I'm not good. And what do I do? I run away. I procrastinate. I make an excuse. I do something different. But what I tell people is, man, it's the perfect moment to take everything you learned and then go and debrief. What went wrong? What can I do right? What did I, how do I react that way? What, you think about it. You're thinking through it. It's not going to take me 10 years because I'm constantly presently thinking about it week by week. Then I go to the back and say, okay, what do I have to redesign? What must I redevelop? If I have to or not, maybe I don't. Redeploy. But now it's a nine of pain. 
again, people will quit because like, oh, it still sucks. The good ones stick in it because they understand why I go through this work. Then it's an eight, seven, six, five. It gets to zero. Here's a crazy thing. That thing that you wanted to do that in the beginning was a 10 of pain. It's not that it's like I'm doing it and it's no pain. Okay. It's joy, dude. Like it's mm. this. I love this, right? In the beginning, you're probably scared of podcasting. Now you love doing it. You're yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm excited. It's full. It's fun. That's the that's what I'm looking to have people understand is the the end of the journey because it's not it's heroes two journeys. I'll, I'll kind of stop talking. I can ramble all day, as you can tell. <laughs> it's great. There's always a huge two journeys. A journey is one of achievement, and the other ones of transformation. Mm -hmm. If you think about Mighty Ducks two, one of my favorite movies, I used to watch <laughs> before games in high school all the time. I got juiced watching it. <laughs> There's the kids that are misfits, right? There's the Emilio Estevez who's kind of like this dude who kind of like, you kind of like the weird dude from his, his work is like community service, I think it was or something. Yeah. And then like there's the, the girls, a tomboy, and there's a chubby kid, and there's a nerdy kid, right? And they form this team of misfits that have, they want to achieve something. And they eventually go through the process of like the montage. Every movie has a montage. It's a transformation mm -hmm. montage. So now, you know, I'm Goldberg the goalie. He's cool. He, he likes who he is, right? <laughs> yeah. The girl feels comfortable. Like the, the weird kid that's like a juvenile delinquent. like the bash brother. Like they're just, they're all dope. At the end, they achieve. They win the championship against the team that's all black from across the town, whatever it was. And they got that kid, Ben, who like mm -hmm. was a punk and now he's cool. Mm -hmm. You get all these different things. And it's like, man, that you feel good for the achievement. They score the goal. But what does every movie end with? Emilio Estevez is this guy who's a good dude now dating the kid's wife or the kid's mom. And now that kid has like a cool family. And then the girl feels good in a dress and Goldberg mm -hmm. feels confident. And Bash Brothers like dope now. <laughs> it's the transformation. Yep. Because now they aren't the people who tried to win. They're the winners. So you could make Mighty Ducks two, three, four, right? It's a different human. So when I talk about that 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, my goal is that's the shift work where you're not just achieving this thing you want to achieve. You will. The work I do, you will achieve your goal. The whole purpose is for you to achieve this thing so I can have you transform into the person who achieves that thing. Oof. Man. All right. So that was... Man, I wish we had some more time. <laughs> this is no, this, this good, is man. this is more interesting than the American Ninja Warrior stuff. I know you've talked about it on a lot of other podcasts anyway, but this is like this is really fascinating. So maybe we'll if we have a round minutes, two, bro. go yeah, go but, quick. Oh, yeah, if you want to tell your story, how, how did you get on American Ninja Warrior? Then my wife, she's crazy. So we got back from Costa Rica. We came back in like a, a rush because someone tried to kidnap our kids out there. It's a private school. Oh, different geez. story for a different time. Oof. Nuts. But I'm telling you, I got a lot of weird stuff. Uh, so we come back, and then my wife's like, "We're at this little apartment because we're trying to find a house and moving this weird little like tiny like." 800,000 square foot, whatever, um, apartment. And she fills this document out online. I have no idea she's doing it. She's like, Hey, I want to let you know, I filled this thing out. It needs a video. I'm like, what? She's like this Ninja Warrior thing. I thought it was Wipeout. You know, the thing with like yeah. the foreign Dude, like, the uh, Asian I applied. People. I've gone through <laughs> the stages on that thing. <laughs> on Wipeout. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Never made yeah, it. So I was like, <laughs> no, it's no, I was like, I don't know if I want to get my face bashed in with like weird, you know, I don't know, no. shaving cream and mud. It's like, oh, you know, so I was like, whatever. I did the video and I didn't know what it was. Well, this is like October, beginning of October. February, I get a call. It's like months later. They're like, hey, 30 days, you're going to be on uh, Ninja Warrior. I'm like, well, what? <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I go and like, look, I'm like six, one and a half. I'm 240 pounds. And, uh, and I'm like, what, what is this? I look at, I'm like, I'm not built for that. Yeah. Like I'm not five, eight, 150 pounds. Like I'm not built for this rock stuff. climber. But I yeah. find, yeah, I find a local gym nearby, I spend about seven hours practicing and I go down and, uh, and the producers like my personal story, but they're like, they're like, go ahead and hit a buzzer. I'm like, I will. They're like, sure you will. Cause <laughs> Never been done. At the time, I thought it never been done before by an actual football player, former NFL athlete. Just oh. found out that it did. A guy named uh, Kamir and Wimbley actually did, I guess, in like season four or something. Mm -hmm. I had no idea until I watched it just last night for the new season. <laughs> they told me this whole time, you're the first person to do it. So I was like, oh, I'm the first person. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. um, but I'm the second person to hit a buzzer as a former NFL athlete on American Ninja Warrior. And, uh, and yeah, man, it was a dope experience because it's one of those potential things. It's like I wanted to see if I could really do it. And I went into it with a perspective in my head of I am a Ninja Warrior. Not that I'm going to try to be one. And it's okay if I fall. Because you know what that looks like when you watch people that you can see in their face, they're trying to do it, mm -hmm. but they don't feel like they're like, and so if they, if they fall off, it's like, cool, I, I went far than I thought I would. I'm like, no, I want to hit a damn buzzer. Mm -hmm. Like that's, I'm coming here. I'm a Ninja Warrior. Why not? Why can't I be like, I, so I'm, right. I stretched out and I figured it out, dude. And I got up and when I was done, the producers were like, ah, that wasn't supposed to happen. I don't know. How. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but like, so it was cool, man. It was a great experience. And I did it for three years, retired, we'll call it retired this last year, um, which is the most recent season. And wow. so, yeah, man, three years and uh, I'm done.
Yeah, no, that's awesome. You got to yeah. go back and watch some of those then. Yeah, you I mean, I, I, I guarantee I've seen them all. But <laughs> I, I think yeah. I've seen every season and, and and watched every single run. So I'm sure I saw I saw no. the runs. But yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you look at you look at the guys like the, the the top of the top. You know, the the Drew Dressels and the 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 guy yeah. with the long hair. I'm drawing a blank on his name. Grant McCartney. Uh, yeah, you got Island that Ninja. guy. Yeah. But, but like like Drew, he just he puts his headphones on. He's like not even worried about falling in the water and losing his electronics and stuff. He's just it's like I are. know what I got to do. You know, and it, it's just like doesn't even think twice about it and you can tell that's yeah. just his identity this is what i do i i hit buzzers i get to the end yeah mm -hmm. he's also i don't know if you know he's also a pedophile you heard about that recently whoa no i didn't that's <laughs> right oh okay. we, my wife and i were yeah he was i guess he was like 26 he was like mess with this like 15 year old girl and <laughs> sleep with her at his gym dude it's a weird story really weird uh he just won the show and then all of a sudden this comes out yeah oh. he's kind of a dirty dude i guess oh, it kind of sucks for the show that's yeah, but that's... you know the show's good there's still there's still awesome humans just that guy of course know. oh man yeah well well, we got one minute. So, where, where can yeah. people go and, and learn more about you and check out your stuff? Uh, yeah, if you want to find out what your identity is, this is what you can actually go through. It's a quiz called slowergo.co um, or go to anthonytrucks.com. The quiz is on there and it'll give you a, a quadrant of which of four identities you are and what you must do to shift to get to that next level so you can actually close your gap. I call it an identity gap between who you uh -huh. are, who you want to be. Uh, and if you want to just follow me and see my stuff, Anthony Trucks on Instagram. It's probably the best way to find my work. Instagram's great, man. Yeah, I love your account and uh, keep it up, brother. I want to let you I go will. because you have a minute, probably 10 seconds or something. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it, man. This is been amazing yeah this is awesome hey, no problem all right, all right guys see you later yeah. hey 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 thank you for listening to that episode this is joe fear i'm sure you probably already knew that and matt is not here right now but i'm pretty sure he enjoyed the episode just as much as you and i did because you know he went into the production of kind of making that thing right along with me so thank you very much and i want to give a quick shout out to our buddies over at easy webinar these guys have been supporting us for a while a long time and casey zeman is just a super good guy all around he's actually been on the show before he's the founder of uh, easy webinar so if you look up casey zeman on any podcast platform you're listening to uh, go check him out. Go check out his backstory, what he's all about. You can learn a lot about webinars as well. And right now, you know, Easy Webinar, these guys are actually hooking you up with a great trial. It's a completely free trial to test out their software, soup to nuts, check it all out and see if it's a good fit for you. If you go to easywebinar.com slash hustle, that's H-U-S-T-L-E, if you didn't know how to spell hustle, there you go. So if you go to easywebinar.com slash hustle, you can go grab a free trial. And Easy Webinar literally lives up to its name. It's super simple. I mean, super easy. And it does all the stuff that you're looking for in any kind of thing with webinars. I mean, they literally cover every single type of webinar you possibly can do. So from live to automated to scheduled at specific times and all these crazy features in between. Can't even list them all out. I'll be here way too long. They give you a ton of advanced analytics, what's working, what's not during your webinar based off all these actions. You'll see who attended, how long they stayed, if they clicked the offer or if they didn't. Basically, you're going to make more money and you're going to work less with this thing and you're going to create better relationships with the folks that are listening because it's a good experience. You want to give that good experience along with some great content, of course, in a killer offer if that's what you got for them. So go try it out yourself. Go check out easywebinar.com slash hustle. That's easywebinar.com slash hustle. All right, all righty. So that is the end of this episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode, enjoying it. Hopefully you did. I'm pretty sure you did if you lasted this long. And go check out Easy Webinar when you get the chance. And we will talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody, for listening to this episode of the Hustle and Flowchart podcast. Before taking the time to listen, and we want to give you something a little bit special. Every single episode that we do, we actually have somebody on our team take notes. We basically have a Cliff's Notes version of every episode where you can go and find all of the tips and tactics that they laid out, all of the resources that they laid out, all the good stuff from this episode. We actually have a nice, simple notes version that you can find on our website. So go to evergreenprofits.com, find this episode that you just listened to, and uh, give us your email address, and we'll send you the notes. Thanks for listening. Mm.